Hello and welcome to another amazing session of um, our online series. This month we'll be looking at a very crucial subject in this particular post-COVID-19 era. So we'll be looking at the, the topic, leveraging social media for brand visibility. And I'm going to be giving you a lot of reasons why this topic is particularly crucial at this time. So for the many persons who are joining us for the first time today, I want to use this opportunity to welcome you and to also encourage you to invite as many other persons to this impactful online series, which we organize monthly. So again, the topic we are looking at is leveraging social media for brand visibility. Why did we choose this topic this time around? In the year 2020, over 3.6 billion people were using social media worldwide, a number projected to increase to almost 4.41 billion in the year 2025. Social media is undoubtedly one of the most profitable digital marketing platforms that can be used to increase your business visibility. And so we must learn how to how best to harness this platform during this great economic shift. So um, as many persons that have opportunities that they have not been able to leverage on the social media, as many persons that are already doing impactful things and yet have not been able to leverage on the social media, today we'll be discussing and bringing on board a guest that will teach us how to uh, add adequately and appropriately utilize and leverage on social media for brand visibility. I'm particularly excited about our guest for today. So permit me to um, give you an introduction of our guest. Our guest for today is Chidi Kulswet. She is the founder Donors for Africa Foundation, where she works actively with governments, funding institutions, the private sector, NGOs and social impact leaders to break circles of poverty by addressing the global challenges we face in Africa. Donors for Africa has raised over 30 million US dollars in direct and indirect funding. She has, and they have also trained over 1,000 nonprofits and have a reach of over 29,000 unique accounts weekly via social media platforms. And Donors for Africa has launched the premier digital social innovators bootcamp in Africa, an annual leadership accelerator program targeted at equipping and developing third sector leaders with technical expertise. Recently, Chidi, who is the founder of this Donor for Africa, was drafted into the African Youth Front on, on COVID-19, launched by the African Union. Office of the Youth Envoy and the Africa Center for Disease Control and Prevention. She was recently featured on NBC, CBS, and Fox News, and has received numerous awards and recognition, one of which is the Social Media for Good Award in the year 2020. She continues to focus on creating long-term solutions that improve the life of Africans by strengthening the capacity of Nonprofit leaders and people at the grassroots through policy formul formulations, strategy, and implementation. It will also inter interest you to know that um, just this morning I was going across, I was surfing the, the web, and I saw a link that directed me to Women Impacting Africa, the, one, the 100 top women impacting Africa. And guess whose name I found among the 100 top? I found the name of our guest, Chidi Cool Sweats. So you should, uh, our, our, you are, we are all really privileged to listen to her this afternoon. So without much ado, I don't want to do much of the talking. I will be allowing our guests to do justice to um, the topic for today, leveraging social media for brand visibility. So join me as to welcome Chidi Cool Sweats. 
Good morning or good afternoon, rather. Um, so this is a bit of a surprise, Jude, and an interesting way to spring it on. I honestly had no idea, absolutely had no idea about what you just said. And like when I heard it, I'm now running off to go and go. <laughs> so that's news to me. Um, thank you so much for sharing. And it's such a pleasure to be here as well. Okay, that's uh, some interesting news. I didn't know that at all. At all. Okay, let us get right into it. It's such a pleasure to be here. I'm really humbled and excited to be sharing a bit of the work that we have done and, you know, as well as sharing a bit of the knowledge that I have when it comes to um, increasing your presence on social media. I'm not just increasing your presence, but also reaping the benefits of increasing your presence. I don't know if I'll be able to share a presentation because I have a presentation ready, but if it's possible, let me know. I'll be happy to share a presentation. If it's not possible, I can just go ahead and have the conversations. So quickly, let's get right into it. I need you guys to tell me in the chat room, how many of us here are running our own businesses? How many of us here are working in nine to five? How many of us here run maybe a nonprofit or a business or we work in nine to five? Can we please just type it in the chat room? You say your name and then you tell me, oh, I work in nine to five or I'm running a business. Quick, 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 quick. don't have a lot of time. Um, let's do that quickly. In, five, in just five seconds, I'm, I'm, I want to establish a point. Hello, Hope. Um, Okay, great. I can share my screen. Uh, beautiful. Okay. Hello, Hope. Yes, please go ahead. Um, okay, so let's see what, what answers do we get. I work a nine to five, nine to five, nine to five at a non-profit. Very interesting. Very interesting. So many of us here don't run businesses. Let's see. Um, um, nine to five, nine to five, nine to four, nine to five. So apparently most of us work in nine to five and that's not a bad thing, that's actually great. So um, it will just help me skewer my conversations to be a lot more focused on the key people in the room. Thank you so much, Aisha, for your message. All right, so let's get right into it. Leveraging social media for brand visibility. Hmm. Um, first off, before I go too far, as you're on this class, just quickly go to Donors for Africa Foundation or Donors for Africa on Instagram and follow us. Um, at Donors for Africa, like Jude rightly said, our work is centered around strengthening the capacities of non-profit organizations, um, government agency, private sector companies, people who run innovative solutions. And our work is centered around strengthening their capacity to access funding, um, to build sustainable organizations, and then most importantly, to solve some of Africa's biggest challenges. And we do this through quite a lot of the programs that we run. And if okay, so let's get right into the topic. What is social media? I don't want to assume we all have the same knowledge. I don't want to assume that we are all on the same age, but um, let's start with the conversation. So social media is pretty much um, an interactive platform you and I know that we use to exchange information, exchange ideas, sell our products, sell our personal brands, and pretty much communicate. We all know that we are in the fourth industrial revolution, which is a knowledge market, and the continent and the world has become smaller. So as it's smaller, it means I can have people from any part of the world. I've had, I've had team members and interns and volunteers work with us from as far as Canada, Australia, London, Madagascar, and they're all scattered around the world. But we, we, are not, we are all doing the same work, yet we are not at the same place. This is exactly what social media happens. Um, if we go on the chat room to just make this class interactive, because I know it's easy to get distracted when you're listening to online classes. Also, tell us in the chat what are some of the social media platforms you know? What are some of the social media platforms you do? Quite the chat room. Let's make the class very active. What are some of the social media platforms you know? Very interactive social media platforms. Anything that allows you exchange information, exchange ideas, um, share what you know. I'm not 
even there's at least one person in the chat room who says X, Y, Z, awesome. Who is this person? Aha, uh -huh. Jimmy says IG, Twitter, Pinterest, Facebook, Snapchat. Fantastic. So she has told us quite a bit. You have so more. You have Zoom is a social media form because how do you interact? It may not be your ideal Facebook type of, of, of platform, but it is interactive. WhatsApp is a social media platform as well. It allows you to interact. Blue Jean and so many of them, they allow you to interact actively with people. So a social media platform is pretty much anything that allows us, that gives us a platform to engage with other people. Now, what is brand visibility? Yes, yes. Thank you so much, Victoria. What is brand visibility? Brand visibility is the extent to which your consumers, your stakeholders, your partners, your government agencies, any way they can recognize you or remember your brand. That's what brand dipping at night and she gets a phone call and they say, oh, hello, Victoria. Please, I'm looking for someone who can help us conduct a monitoring and evaluation exercise. And automatically you pick up the phone and say, oh, yes, I know somebody. Um, I know Halima from this organization in Abuja. What made you remember Halima in this particular situation? Why didn't you think of Johnson? Or why didn't you think of John? Or why didn't you think of your friend? What made you identify Halima as the ideal person to manage a monitoring and an evaluation campaign? It's simple. Halima must have consciously or unconsciously established her authority. You must have interacted with Halima five years and you, you could tell that she had an extensive knowledge of whatever subject matter she was teaching at that particular point in time. Or maybe you interacted with the quality of her work and you say, oh, wow, Halima does fantastic M and E. Look at the way she did the graphs. Look at the way she did the pie charts. I think she should be the person you're speaking with. It could also be someone that you heard from someone, right? So for example, I'm here teaching. Maybe because Madam Janet heard my voice or knows about me and she recommended me to someone else. Maybe a dude knows me or maybe dude knows me somewhere I was recommended and I was invited to come and teach. You need to ask yourself, either as a young person, as someone who runs a business, as someone who works a nine to five, what will stop, what problem will somebody think of solving? And automatically my, my name will come to bear. My name will be the first, first name they think about. In the different organizations we work with, there are some people who, when the boss thinks about I want this conference to go without any hitch. The person can only think of one person in that office that can do a thorough job. Why? Because the person has consistently built a brand. The person has consistently shown evidence that they are the right people for that particular work. Maybe they have deployed excellence or they have resource. There are some people who, when you say, I want to buy something in Lagos State, they can. They can call somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that will deliver that thing to you. They are very, very resourceful. If you say, I'm looking for a social media graphics designer, the person knows somebody that is a fantastic social media graphics designer. Some people have that sort of, no, it's not grace. It's an attitude people build up. Some people have that sort of lifestyle or approach to work. Where, where are they are, they are so resourceful. They are so great that what they do that completely unconsciously they are consistently recommended by any other third party. I'll give a quick example. I remember when I left paid employment in 2017 and um, one of the things that gave me the confidence to go ahead and start my business was the number of calls I kept getting from people I had worked with or women that knew me when I worked somewhere else, women who were part of the work that I had done, men who had seen me coordinate the content. People kept calling me consistently, oh, come and do this for me. Oh, come and write the document for me. And I started charging, you know, charging people.
consistently built a specific message in your mind or they have solved a specific problem. So I hope we're now beginning to see that brand building is synonymous to problem solving. The brand you use is synonymous to problem solving. I mean, I get to now work with my former boss on a lot of, on, a, on, on different skills. And you don't want to know the excitement I see in her when she sees me at forums, when she's speaking at, and she knows that, oh, this is, this is the Aburo, or this is the person that I, I, I trained. I mean, one of my, my colleagues is here. She knew what my journey was like. This is the person I trained until she could learn to write a letter properly, right? So your brand, like the brand that you build is synonymous with the problem that you solve, whether as a business or as an individual. Whether you are working in a small office of only two people or you're working in a big office of 30 people, the brand you are building consciously or unconsciously will be as a result of the problems you solve. Let me give you another quick example. There's a lady called Jumoke Oduwole. You might know her, you may not know her, but she's an active player. She's a techni technical expert in Nigerian government. She works with the presidency. She picked up a lady to become her special advisor when she went into office. Let me tell you how she picked up this lady. While she was working a nine to five, it sounds like maybe as TBLF is, TBLF has another time. So maybe every time a building needs somebody to maybe print materials in a certain way, print and file them and you know staple them properly. It Will put a call or Judo call. Oh, please, I need you to help me get this sorted ASAP before 10 o'clock. The person is solving that problem. That's exactly how that girl was to her. Stepped into that office, please. That girl solved the problem. So, Jennifer, you know, the person is Tolu Sally. You know, she solves the problem automatically. In solving her problems while she was working in nine to five. So we and then we begin to realize that the work that we do it precedes us. The trickiest thing about building a brand, it is whatever somebody tells somebody it is. That I noticed that um, the CEO of Oxide joined, right? Um, Stanley joined this session a few minutes ago. Whatever solution Stanley is providing, do you know that the solution will go ahead of him before someone will decide to recommend him or not recommend him for business? So I hope we get the point. You recognize a brand on this screen because they have solved the problem of transportation, some are solving the problem of entertainment, some are solving the problem of um, computer um, use and having tools and resources that make you using the computer a lot easy. What are the case means? Solving a, a, what I call it, a levels type of problem. People like BMW, you know, it's not just about driving a car, it's about driving a luxurious car. Whatever it is, you must leave this session understanding problem and you're a crappy member of a team and you're making work difficult for your team members you are building a brand that will go ahead of you because tomorrow your team member would leave and go to another organization and who knows maybe your name will come forward Somebody will say, no, 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 no. That person is this, is this, is this, is this, is this, is this, is this. And then they will go for someone else. It has happened a lot of times. This decision is being made. So whether you work within a team or you feel like, I beg, after all of my papa gets this work, work, I'm just here to just mark time. As you're marking time, you are building a brand. 
and that brand is what will precede you in the future all right okay so let's get along with it now um there are two types of brand visibility we are going somewhere the topic is how to leverage social media to increase your brand visibility we have explained what social media is and we have talked about what brand visibility is and the truth is without social media you cannot increase your brand visibility or rather social media plays an active role in your ability to increase your brand but before you even increase your brand there has to be a, a there has to be a brand a good or a bad brand before we now promote or increase our brand visibility now there are different types of visibility right i put here there's a personal brand visibility and there is a product visibility you can type in the chat room and tell me what sort of brand are you building at the moment? Are you building a product brand? I know that you are the product, too, but specifically, are you building a personal a product brand? We all fall into one category. You're either building product brand or you are building a personal brand. And when I say product brand here, most of the times it is a, you know, a water bottle. Right, you have all these little things that you sell. That's most likely a product. A product could also be digital product, right? Um, but I would put digital products right on that on that personal brand visibility because that's where you may have What other brand are we with? Who has a product or service that they sell? Or who has a business that is providing service? Because that's also a type of selling, right? Who has a business that is providing a service? Everybody's waiting for. For you to stand out any day, any time, you must either be building a personal brand or you're building a product brand. If you're building a personal brand, what are you known for? in your specific industry and let me let me let me clarify this as well because i know that's a question that may come up a lot of times when i teach these things people ask me oh i run a business or oh, i run want to be known for for example i have a writing business right where i write a lot of um, personal profiles and things like that um i i, I prepare resume government officials for like all sorts right i have a writing business i do business proposals i used to do business proposals I do a lot of grant writing and things like that. And then I also run a store where I sell perfumes. I have a, a store where I sell perfumes and we, 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 we provide some of the finest, long lasting scents you can ever have, right? In addition, in the past, I have also run a store where I sold children's clothes. I used to import clothes from the UK back in the days and I would sell to people up to them. I used to also sell fabrics back in the days. I, I used to sell fabrics, and those fabrics were used um, for your weddings and for all sorts. I sold fabrics to the point where people were beginning to place ridiculous amounts of sizes, you know, but I couldn't continue because I didn't know now what I, what I should have known then. 
So whatever the case may be, I'm waiting for some of us in the chat room, people are sharing. I'm into processing and packaging locally produced rice. My question to you is simple, Stanley. How many people have you packaged rice and provided or donated to? How many organizations have you gone to to say to them, look, we, there is a development project in some states and you are trying to um, raise money to, you know, uh, what's it called, share food on that day. We can actually package a five kg rice, brand it to your company, brand on top of it and deploy 500 or 100 bags and they will pay for it up front. You know, that's also brand positioning. Victoria is asking, is it possible to build both? I believe I'm building both. I'm building a product brand. I'm actually also into mini importation, making quality bags primarily all available at affordable prices. Now, uh, in answer to that question, Victoria, I always tell people, yeah, this, right? My first question, what do you want to be known for? What is it that, 15 years from now, they are looking for an authority in a particular subject matter, be it importation, be it a nine to five, maybe a career role, right? You are the only person they could think about, the only person that they can imagine or, or think will be able to solve that problem. It is okay, don't get me wrong, it is okay to run multiple businesses and do multiple things. Ultimately, the brand you want to consistently promote should be the brand that you believe resonates with who you are for example some people work nine to fives but they are promoting their mc brand they are promoting their comedian brand they are promoting their uh, maybe they have a very big warehouse where they do something like you do that's the only brand they are promoting because in the next five ten years that's how they want to be seen so it's always very important that you know there are so many things we would have to do to fuel our dreams to fund our dream as they are dreaming right my answer to that question every single time is always be clear about what you want to be known for. In as much as I do all these things, right, I do not promote them as speedy cold sweat because I don't want to have a confusing brand. I don't want to have a brand who, when they call to say, who can talk about nonprofit, they, they don't think about me or there's so much confusion, you know, and you're not sure of who to pick. But I wanted to build a brand that when you think of any problem in the nonprofit sector, any problem in development, just think about me. That's the sort of brand I wanted to build. Do I have other things that I do on the site? Yes. The store is, you know, we promote the store as the store and do all the things that we need to do to promote that particular business. But when it comes to me as a personal brand, I am building Chidi Cold Sweat as a personal brand in the development sector, right? So that question, you would have to answer that question based on your unique needs as an individual, based on your dreams and based on your vision. If you know your vision is to run a large establishment, right? And you want to be known as an international business tycoon, Feel free to promote your brand in mini exportation as long as it does not conflict with who is currently employing you, right? You know, but if you want to promote a brand as this technocrat or this individual in this sector, feel free to also do that. But just ensure that there are no conflicting messages. Yeah. Okay. Let me quickly see if anybody else. Um, Dio says, I like to build a personal brand as a budding writer. That's great. Jumi says, a personal brand, a brand for the NGO I work with. Absolutely. So, Jumi, for your case, you will need to now start developing specific skill sets that will be very unique to you in your sector so that when people engage with you, when people come across, when people have a specific problem in the nonprofit sector, are you the one that they can come to to help them solve that problem? Some of these things will take time. They not come to us automatically, right? But just to have it at the back of your mind so that whatever it is that is of interest. I mean, I have a friend who went all the way to Melbourne to learn monitoring and evaluation. I don't think I would, I would invest that amount of money to just go and learn monitoring and evaluation. Maybe I would invest that money to go and learn something else in another university, but she's willing to do that because she's building a brand in the M&E sector. Do you get what I mean? So I would always invest in what you have an interest in. Um, remember to leave all your questions in the chat room. Remember to leave all your questions in the chat room. 
Ella says, I organized self-discovery and livelihood enhancement training for teen girls and mid-age women in my local government. So most likely you're trying to build a brand as a change maker or as a social innovator. So you want to explore um, programs that will build your capacity. And also ex you want to also explore fellowship programs that can in increase your brand visibility because the more for ecosystem you know and then slowly you begin to build your brand of excellence you know so i um, want to try and have some funding opportunities some grant opportunities to generate resources for the work that you do um let's see media buys your blood was oh very interesting very very interesting okay great uh, i was trying to name as well I, what you are doing what you do is quite interesting okay great thank you all so much for engaging it makes us feel like we are not alone you know now personal and product visibility which is more important do you think it's more important to have a personal brand do you think it's more important to have a product brand? which one do you think is more important feel free to share it in the chat room but for the sake of time i will just go ahead to say they are both equally important and in reference to my answer to victoria it all depends on what exactly you want to build. For some people, their personal brands are their products, right? Their you may know on Instagram, who their name. I mean, one person I respect a lot. What's his name? John Obidi is one person I respect a lot because he does have content and depth. Right? So, for example, John Obidi is a personal and product brand, right? Uh, for people, are only just great at the product itself. So let me give a classic example. I think it's called the Shapeables on Instagram. They're very popular, they're like the product website, and they're a very popular brand. You may not even know the individual behind the brand, but the product sells for itself. So this, this is the difference, and this is the distinction. You can have a personal um, product brand where you are the brand and you have solutions that are you centered or you can have a product brand where you're not interested in your face you just want to sell your product have fine and happy you right you want to run as a separate entity while there are some who while they are running their product brand they also want to be visible they want to be seen they want to be heard i think there's a girl called funke something funke on instagram who sells like um, materials from china like microphones and things like that and she's promoting herself you know her product using herself so for every time she comes up to do a funny video she's just testing the microphone with the microphones to show you her latest microphones so whatever like whatever your decision is i always tell people let that decision be your be your decision to take if you choose to have a brand that is faced you want a product promote the product. Many of us may not know the CEO of Coca-Cola, but we know, we know Coca-Cola the product. So if that is the sort of brand you want to build, it is absolutely fine. It is absolutely fine. You just need to ensure that um, more work that needs to go into it. Okay. So why is visibility important? Why is visibility important for your brand? I wrote here that it's the easiest way to be more memorable. You know, things have changed so much from when we were, from when some of us were a lot younger. Um, back in the days, I don't need to know who is selling food. All I need to know is give me food, let me eat and go. But thanks to social media, things have evolved to the point where your personal brand can give credit to the work that you're doing. So if you're building a good personal brand, and people want to know if they can trust you they can say oh as long as it's chidi i'm sure that thing will be excellent right it is because you have built a personal brand that can give credit or can give goodwill to the business that you run there are also some people who their businesses have have you know developed such good or bad visibility or brand positioning that if you think of buying a product, you don't want to know who is behind the product, whether the person is a, is a soothsayer, whether the person, I mean, look at um, Titus Fish. 
that we used to eat that started from four and is now two. Many of us don't know who is behind Titus Fish. It's an evil man who is behind Titus Fish, in case you don't know. <laughs> it's an evil man who is behind Titus Fish. Many of us don't know who is behind Okim Biscuit. It's the same person who is behind Titus Fish that is behind Okim Biscuit. I can go on and on and on. He has so many products in the market, but we don't know him. And many of us are not interested in knowing him. As long as his products can continue to meet our needs, we are fine. So whatever table you choose to sit on, whatever solution you choose to, to, to provide, let it be unique to you. Let it be something that resonates with where you are headed as an individual. So here are some reasons why it's very important to grow your visibility, your brand visibility. Number one, it increases your marketing efforts. Do you know that sometimes for people who work nine to fives, I know we are quite a lot here. Do you know sometimes because somebody knows you, they can give you the email address of their founder or of their CEO. I have someone in my network, right, who is my, pretty much my friend. I can come to her for any information. She can come to me for any information. And we will share that information out of trust. Why? Because we have interacted with each other for so long a time that we have built trust over the years. As no, I don't think there is anything, bank account number, oh, I don't think there is anything that person will ask me for that I have and I need to provide that I will not provide simply because I have a personal relationship. We have built trust. We have built credibility. There are some people that as long as it's not, for example, if Victoria is not the one saying, please, can I have the, see, the email address of your CEO? They will never give you that information. They will never give you that email address. It doesn't matter who you are. Ah, whether you are the chief impact officer or the, they will they will give you a they give you info at tblf.com. Why? Because you've built trust with someone. So marketing efforts here, I'm, I'm, I'm assigning it to both paid businesses and personal brands. For paid businesses, do you know what it is? For you to have visibility, every time I want to make a dress, I am willing to order the dress from Calabar, and the person will send it to me in Lagos. I will bypass every other tailor in Lagos and go to Calabar and pick a, 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 a dressmaker to, to deliver my dress. Why? Because I found her somewhere on Instagram. When I found her on Instagram, I loved her pieces. I, I loved the way that particular piece appeared, that particular creation appeared. So I placed an order straight from my website or straight from her link or straight from her DM and she sent it to me in Lagos. So being visible increases your marketing effort. Number two, it increases your revenue. Automatically, the moment you are increasing your marketing, more money is coming in. The more proposals you can get people to say approved, 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 the more money your nonprofit or your organization can generate, right? So when you increase your brand visibility, you also do what? Increase your revenue. Let's take, for, for example, the guy who packages rice, local rice, right, and he sells. Let's picture that he's now able to convince people on social media or build a community on social media where he's telling people the benefits of eating this rice over this other rice, how his rice is already cleaned, there is no single stone. He teaches you the process of boiling the rice quickly. Every day he's showing you different recipes where he's telling you, you know, you can actually boil your rice with carrots, green peas, it's very healthy, it's a great way to introduce it to your children, it has less fat, it's a time to watch your weight, eat local rice. There is a way he will educate me on the product he sells, right? No matter where I am located. If you go to Instagram, you find people sending products outside the country. We at DFA, we have people who have paid for services, paid for products from different parts of Africa. Do you want to tell me that there is nobody within their different countries that was providing the same solution? I know that organizations have taken up consulting projects for two weeks, three weeks, one month, one year. They are here in Nigeria and they are conducting a research for, a, for an organization in Canada, an organization in Zimbabwe, and they get paid $2,500 at the end of that seven days campaign. So for you to be able to position yourself, 
to access such attract such opportunities, you must deliberately increase your brand visibility. Pretty much, where are we seeing you? Where are we hearing about you? Can I be sitting in my house scrolling through my phone and I will see your advert popping up on my timeline? Can I be saying hello to my friend and all of a sudden I will see your, your post coming up on a group that I belong to? How are people seeing you? Do you know that there are people they call headhunters? I have a I had a friend, sorry, he's still my friend. I have a friend when he was working with Access Bank. He was headhunted from Access Bank to Dangote, um, Dango, to Dangote organization. Like he was called by a headhunter to say, tell us how much you want to earn. We want you to come and work for this client. And that was how he moved. So I don't want us to think brand building or brand visibility is only when you are selling a product you can also sell yourself as a personal brand but how good is the work that you are doing three when you increase your brand visibility you gain a lot of credibility okay we were here now and jude said um, i went to do a quick research on our speaker why did you go on and do a quick research on the speaker. And then he came across an information that the speaker did not know about, right? So let's say he did a quick search on me. And then he now saw a uh, Um, yellow woman in a village, is that right? I'm not telling you the credit who invited him to come to the UK. It was a you know how you have like UK something, something, something for tech people that were selected. And sadly, on the day he was he traveled to the UK, it was a Sunday, and on that Sunday, people who were supposed to pick him, phones were not available. All the people he was supposed to reach in the UK were literally not available. He was now having problems with immigration. Immigration had to hold him back. And then, when the please ask a question in the chat room. Immigration had to hold him back. When immigration held him back, guess what? They now started doing a search online. They were now searching. And then they started seeing it. Oh, um, you know, I don't know, call me correct name, you will find. So for you to increase visibility as a product or a personal brand, you must be deliberate. Sorry, I'm going back to the guy who sells rice again, who is packaging locally produced rice. How many interviews have you granted to say, hi, my name is, um, forgive me if I forgot your name, let's say Chukwemeka or Onemeka. My name is Chukwemeka and I am producing locally made rice I'm solving the problem of any health challenge where Pali made rice. This rice can be exported. This rice is healthy. Can I go and I will see Guardian News and I will see information about you? All right. Finally, it also helps you increase your access to potential customers. Whether as a nonprofit nine to fiver who is running a nonprofit organization, what would make a brand decide to sponsor your project? What would make people decide to come on board the work that you do, right? If you are not increasing your brand visibility. So let's take one minute to go quickly into the sections and see if people have any questions to ask. Um, it's, it's very bad manners for you to go into a, a forum like this and you are bombarding people with the work that you do. It's not a very great approach to marketing. So in as much as we're talking about marketing, please don't go bombarding people with information. Oh, we do this, we are this. You know, people, you know, introduce themselves in a very formal way in the chat room. I mean, I can tell you one million and one ways to go about this, right? I just don't want to call your name. But you can actually introduce the work that you do, make valuable contributions to the, to the conversation. If you want your post to be seen consistently, you know, and you can do it in a very respectful way. It's not fair to use another person's platform 
to promote your your product. Okay. Um, let's see what's happening in the chat room. I'm sure you would get the recording. Oh wow, the freak is sorry about that. Still, my my sound seems to be low. I would also increase it from my end to a hundred percent. And let's see if that helps you, right? Um, okay, it's like a hundred now. If you're using an earpiece, try not to use an earpiece. Sometimes it alters the volume. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, great. All right. Um, okay. Now let's move on, right? Are we following? Please, if you're following, let me know in the chat room that this makes sense to you. Or oh, this doesn't make sense. I've heard this thing before. Oh, I'm disappointed. This is the thing I came to waste my, my time to be listening to. Irrespective of the response, please let us know in the chat room. Let's just be sure that we still have people in the room, right? If this makes any sense, if it's adding any you, please feel free to let us know. Okay, let's go into the how. So now, how do you increase your visibility? How do you increase your visibility? First off, you need to identify your message because um several platforms work differently for different messaging right so first of all, you need to identify your message am i building a personal brand or am i selling a product if i'm building a personal brand take it straight to number two what platforms do i need to be on i'm selling a product such as this for example Sorry, an aeroplane was flying above my head. So I didn't want to keep interrupting you guys. Okay. So if you are selling a product, you know, there are so many platforms you can be on where you can just keep promoting your product. I'll give you an example. If you go to Telegram, there are so many business groups on Telegram. If you go to Facebook, there are so many markets on Facebook, digital markets on Facebook where you can promote your product. Oh gosh, I wish I did a bit of research so I can give you a long list. I see if we can send it to our PRD later, right? But there are all these platforms, on digital platforms, on WhatsApp, on Telegram, on Facebook, you know, Instagram is another fantastic place where you can just post your product, post your product, post your product. But if you're building a personal brand, right? You also want to think about what platforms will be ideal for the work that I do. For example, people who are building personal brands, you want to consider LinkedIn and, of course, Instagram. If you run a nonprofit as a nonprofit, you want to consider Facebook. Facebook. If you're running an organization where you have to make intelligent inputs into conversations, right, you want to consider Twitter. So you must first of all identify your message so that you can find the right platforms for the work that you are doing. Somebody who is running a, who is in a nine to five baby asking, how do I promote my personal brand? Tell us a story, take us into the life that you live as a nonprofit staff. Take us into that life. Oh, Monday morning here at so and so organization. Oh, we are, you know, behind the scene video reel of us working on a particular project together as we are prepping towards our, our, our conference. Maybe we have an upcoming conference and we are prepping towards it. You know, you're sharing your journey, you're sharing your learning experiences. That's a great, a fantastic way to build your personal brand, right? Because and what I mean sharing, I'm not just saying when you take lovely pictures, post. But when you have a session, for example, a session like this, and you are a part of a learning experience, Part of the way of building your personal brand is to go to a digital platform and talk about it. Oh, the TBLF um, um, COVID-19 series was phenomenal. This is what I learned. I learned how to do this, how to do this, how to do this, how to do that. Five, my five key takeaways. Look, I remember when I got into the World Bank um, um, program in 2000. Experience. Guess what? There was nobody's experience to read. Nobody. I didn't know.
workshop sessions. If anybody here has ever gotten a scholarship and you are preparing to travel, you would note that there are a lot of questions in your head. Let's say, for example, you are in University of California. Expect that there will be somebody who has blogged about it, right? For example, now if you go and type on Twitter or Instagram, relocating to Canada. Share her experiences, the top 10 things to know about relocating to Canada. Leave your Nigerian account running. Make sure you buy enough undergarments if you're a woman. Like she was giving so many tips. Do you know how valuable those lessons are? So, even if you're, you are a personal brand, you can build your brand visibility by bringing us or by sharing your experiences when you go for conferences, when you meet some phenomenal person. Maybe TVLF was able to help you, or through TVLF, you, made, you met one renowned writer or one renowned life changing person. You can actually tell your story. Telling your story is a fantastic way to get noticed, even as a personal brand. And I'm trying to bring it to the barest minimum so that nobody has an excuse. Number three, you must be consistent. One of the key things to building your personal brand or your business brand is consistency. Let me tell you why. A lot of scam. There are a lot of fluff. There are people who will say A and they will do B. So people are tired. We are now all just watching. So when we see somebody sharing, we'll just be looking, 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 looking. We can see your post like one million times, but we'll just be looking until we will not say, oh, okay, this person is here for a long time. We begin to engage, we begin to engage, we begin to recommend, we begin to discuss. If you are not consistent, I keep talking about my very first speaking job, my very first speaking in 2018. Speaking in the sense as a personal brand, my very first speaking opportunity in 2018. I was having one of the worst days of my life, literally. It was one of those days like, what am I even doing? I'm just tired. I'm, life don't tire me. I meet my friends, right? I was one of such days. But because I had made a personal commitment to myself that at least I will post on LinkedIn once a day. At least I will post on LinkedIn once a day. So while I was in the salon, I cannot forget. While I was sitting in front of the hairdresser, you know, around 12 o'clock, I quickly just went on. That's to tell you how long it took me. That's to tell you how long it took me to post on LinkedIn because I was really struggling that day. I went on LinkedIn and I quickly said something about a particular um, account, kind of specifically funding, something about funding and donor expectations and things like that. And guess what? In the evening, when I was on my way back from, um, oh wow, such a long time. In the evening, on my way back from, the salon where I went to do my hair. So I was stuck in traffic. And as I was about to turn into my, you know, a shortcut, I just said, mm. as people were delaying in front of us, I was like, ah, let me even check my LinkedIn and see if anybody has even reacted, blah, blah, blah. Ladies and gentlemen, I kid you not. Someone had gotten into my DM on LinkedIn. Oh, thank you so much for this particular thing that you um, posted, you know, we were just discussing it and this is going to be the key area or the key focus of our conference. We would like to invite you to speak on. That was how my day went from zero to one percent, right? You, you, you want to be consistent and I'm not going to kid you, it's not easy. It is not easy. You can go and buy followers, that's the fastest way, but trust me, no engagement. Sorry, aeroplane again. You find people with 500,000 followers. When they post, only two people will like their post. They bought, they bought it. Those people bought it. That's how you know that they bought stuff. Okay? So, first of all, find your message, find your platform, and then most importantly, be consistent. Okay, so let's see what's happening in the chat room. Thank you so much, TBLF, for sharing this. <laughs> Patience, please extract. I'll look at it right after. Um, yes, please kindly use the Q&A section to drop your questions. Um, yes, Daniel, please, please work on your product. Feel free to share what your product is about. I'm happy to give some pointers from top of my head as I'm speaking. Um, Esther says, is it advisable to advertise or tell people from the social media community about an activity you intend to do in a community 
that most of the targeted persons are not on social media. Yes, Esther, because we have different stakeholders. So what that means is we have different people who are involved in a project, right? You have your direct beneficiaries, which are the people in that community that you're trying to reach. You have your sponsors, potential sponsors. Now your potential sponsor may not, you may not have access, direct access to a potential sponsor, but you may have access to somebody who may have had a conversation with somebody about wanting to fund a project in any community. Because you share that particular information with maybe a Jude, and you're like, oh, Jude, we want to even implement XYZ intervention in XYZ community, you know? And maybe Jude has a brother who just said, I'm looking to just give back to society. It's true, I have a friend who wants to do something. You never can tell. I will give you another idea. <laughs> Last year, one of the biggest businesses DFA got, right? It was from social media. I was having a live class and not this not the CEO of that company. It was a member of staff of that company, right? After the live class, she was sending all these messages on my personal on my personal inbox. Honestly, I was like, all these people have come again. But I just indulged her, answered her questions. Guess what? The next day, Ma, please can I get your email address and phone number? Ma, I was called. Ma, Ma, are you coming for a meeting? I went for a meeting. We are now managing a lot of their activities as Excel consultants. That may never have happened if I never went live, if I never thought, if I never. So I'm just saying yes to your question, right? Because you never can tell which of the stakeholders that would be a stepping stone to your next level is in the room while you are sharing. So that's why people say share. Share on the text, come to Facebook and talk about it. Come and talk about it here and come and talk about it there. And if you don't only share your successes. A lot of people do that. They only come and ask, oh, I just got a job. Thank you so much. Some people will not tell us that they have been jobless for 15 years or for 15 months and they are looking for work. So do not only talk about the positives. You can actually go and say, or we are trying to break into this community and we are finding it difficult to connect to the right stakeholders. If you know anyone in XYZ community, please recommend, please give us their numbers. So people should also use social media platforms as a way of troubleshooting. You see people say, oh, they arrested us. I want to want to they come to their aid. If you were on Insta blog yesterday, you would notice that a girl was beating up in a room full of, some boys beat up the girl because the guy was saying, yes, you are, don't I have the right to cheat on you, I'm a guy, right? And now, you know, the national whatever. Have you saying looking for these boys? Give it one week now. They have caught the similar message. The visibility, and I hope some of the points I have shown you can. So let's go on, go on YouTube and type how to run. Tell you lots and lots of you know information on how to run an advert on Instagram or Facebook. Gauge on other people's page. People don't realize the importance. But see, social media create an active platform. The more you engage, right? Rather, it, it, it thrives on engagement. So when you actively engage, you are also actively bringing attention to the work that you are doing. So engage. Get to know who Victoria is with Jumi. Connect with uh, Dayo. Connect with somebody else. And you guys should plan to do something together. Maybe both of you will host a live. Maybe both of you will, I don't know what it is, but it's important that you engage on people's page, right? Post at the right time. There's a process to that. Go to your page and check your algorithm. What time are your followers on social media? Post at such time, because I know that that's a question that people ask every single time. Then um, use a lot of pictures. Use a lot of pictures, use a lot of videos, right? Because I mean, I've studied Instagram for quite a while. Things are consistently changing. 
it, many a times text doesn't work anymore as much as should a lot of pictures just a lot of videos you know instead of writing what you want to say talk about what you want to say of course use hash use hashtags right if you run a business for example the rice business we spoke about you can easily have an hashtag for it healthy rice in lagos or healthy rice in uyo healthy rice in nigeria maybe if somebody is because you always have to think about what are people searching for right and how can my name pop up when they search for it on social media and that's what hashtags pretty much is so you need to now go and put it there and you say maybe if you want to buy a jacket now and you put hashtag jacket in lagos right if anybody has used this is it i have about 500 posts now i have 500 posts and they are all jackets in lagos right so if anybody uses that hashtag jacket in lagos as long as I have searched for Lagos, their store will come up, right? Their store will come up. So if you provide a service as well, you can go there and put, for example, at DFA, sometimes we use grants. We even use hashtags as much as we should anymore because everybody is thinking, but please don't be like us. Use your hashtags, right? But if you, do, if you put things like, um, sometimes we'll use a hashtag to say things like um, grants writing, Nonprofits in Lagos, NGOs in Nigeria, sustainable development goals, social impact, social innovators bootcamp, by donors for Africa, so that if we search for donors, our name will come out. Grants, our name will come out. Social, our name will come out. So your hashtags are pretty much just random information, but put yourself in the mind of the person who wants to buy product. What would the person search? Maybe mini importation classes, for example. Mini importation classes. How to get into mini importation. What that means is, is it time for you to start doing YouTube videos? This is free. It is cheap. It, is, it comes at absolutely no cost. You know, whatever it is that you do, either as a personal brand or as a nonprofit or as a business brand, is it time to start having a YouTube video? So that when people go to YouTube and they chat and they, and they type in there, how to start a mini importation business, let your video pop up among the different videos that I, I, I just recently had on Monday or Tuesday, I had feeling right on my teeth or in my teeth. Guess what I did? When I got home, because I wasn't sure how to go about maintaining it and keeping it clean and things like that, I went on YouTube and I guess what I typed in? How to take care of a feeling. How to take care of your tooth after a feeling. And I was seeing all sorts of videos. At least if nothing else, it helped me clear that confusion in my mind. So, sorry. So whatever it is that you do, right? It's very important that you always think about providing information from the perspective of the person who is using your product, who is using your service, maybe natural skincare products in Uyo, uh, when they click, they will see you there. Maybe um, you're doing a post as TVLF and you want to do a YouTube series where you're saying like, um, how to start a business with zero Naira by TVLF. You put it on YouTube. Why? Because People will have, people will search all those things and they would need you to point them in the right direction. Okay, let me quickly go. Use hashtags, share other things. But sometimes when you share other people's content, the followers will see that content and they would add value to the work that you're doing. And you know how it is when I share uh, Victoria's content, for example, and then Victoria shares Jumi's content. Jumi's followers will follow Victoria, Victoria's followers will follow me. So it's important that you share other people's content. You are the knowledge stock, write articles. If the Nigerian government has done something that you don't agree with, if a policy has been passed that you don't agree with, it is okay to go and let yourself, either on your personal page, on YouTube, express yourself. And you don't have to agree. That is the most, there's a girl called Candace Owen in the US. She literally agrees she's black, and she agrees with every single thing Trump does against black people, or Trump used to do against black people. Policies, and guess what? When she's giving her points, not emotional points, 
Candice will give you logical, clearly thought out points on why they need to stop this sort of program. They need to stop this sort of intervention for black people. She may have been the most hated woman in America in the black community, but guess what? She keeps getting the political appointments. She keeps getting the, because she has a perspective. So in a generation where everybody wants to sound like everybody, sound like yourself, have a perspective, have a voice, you don't have to be right, but you should always be open to learning. Like I tell people, you don't have to agree with the things I say. You don't have to agree with what I'm teaching in this class, but just take several steps. So from time to time and ask yourself, okay, this is what this person is saying. It won't hurt me to try and to see. And sometimes you may be right, sometimes you may be wrong. So irrespective of the case, you know, it's important that you share your thoughts on all of these issues that affect us as individuals, or your sector or the business that you run. Um, ask customers to give you a review. If you run a business, when you sell a product and people enjoyed it, don't let it end there. Reach out to them to say, oh, thank you so much once again for purchasing our product. I wanted to find out if we are having any issues. Ask patients, she's right here on the call. Sometimes you send her random emails. Oh, we noticed that you downloaded XYZ documents. Please let us know if you're having any difficulty, you know, work with those documents. We're happy, we're happy to have a quick call to talk you through it. You want to have that after sales engagement, right? Because I always tell people, it is easier to retain an existing customer than to get a new customer. It is easier to retain an existing donor than to get a new donor. Many people that are in the non-profit sector, one of the biggest problems we are having is that we are not nurturing existing relationships. We are constantly looking for new relationships new money new things new i'm not saying it's not good to look for new stuff i'm just saying not what you have not the donor you have not what the customers you have know their birthdays know their, their you know when someone is having a bed use one thousand naira and call the person send it to the 500 naira recharge card you know when you come back to tell the person tomorrow oh we've ordered we have a new set of rice we just finished packaging the rice and our rice has come in you know please feel free to call us or that we'll bring it to your doorstep I remember when I was pregnant with one of my kids and I went to the market and I wanted to buy things, right? Guess what? I now ran into a woman in the market. She said, ah, madam, see that, see that, see that, see that, see that. Give me your list. She took her over. She took my list. Right? And she went to source for all those. She has a store. It was her store I was sitting in. She said, no, 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 no. Don't stress yourself. Sit down. And she went to get all the things that I wanted. And guess what? She got them at cheaper prices. She got them at cheaper prices. And guess what she said to me? Anytime you want anything, if you want wife, if you want anything, see my number, just call me. My boy go bring and call your house. Do you understand what she's doing? She's making my life easier. Because when I think of going, oh gosh, I have to be market and go and be stuck on, on wives and diapers and things like that. But I have to is to call her and to you my my wife is finished i want four pieces i want diaper i want pieces she don't let the transport fare for me or maybe she has put the transport fare in the amount of things that she's charging me to buy but she tell me delivery is free I'll carry on for you. so you must always have that other engagement even if the person is a speaker there has to always be an after engagement for example a dfa when you finish speaking we send you um, feedback from your session from participants. We tell you things that we think you can improve on. There is always a communication right after. We find ways to continue to engage you in the work that we do. Why? Because you never can tell which relationship will yield the results that you're looking for. Let me run quickly. Work on your personal and product brand. Generate an email list. An email list is pretty much everybody who you interact with right everybody who comes across your the work that you're doing the blog that i talked about if you do a blog post on um five things i don't like about living in uyo or five things you should know as a non-profit leader in uyo or if you write any of those interesting articles you can give people one two, and you tell them oh when they subscribe to your platform you can send the article directly to their emails Find a way to always get people to part with press address. It could be their email address. It could be anything. So that it gives you an opportunity to continue to nurture the relationship 
right after. But an email list is very important. And let me tell you why. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg can wake up in the morning and say we decided to shut down Instagram operations. He can wake up tomorrow to say we decided to shut down Facebook, shut down WhatsApp. How can people who have purchased from you continue to reach you? See why I said it's important. So you want to ensure, irrespective of what happens, you see the land that you build, the house that you build, the land that you buy, it is your own. But you see the one that you are living, maybe if you are if you rented an office in somebody else's property, they can come tomorrow and say, Ah, but I'm sorry, oh my kid, where this trees are land. He wants to move in. You cannot say, ah, I'm sorry, we cannot move out. You will move out of the apartment. Why? Because the owner of the house wants to use the house. That's exactly what social media is. As much as it is important and it is relevant, you must generate your own email. Come up with different ideas and get people. That's what it means by having a community. A community, people who follow you, people who know about what you do, who are interested in what you do, right? And they're key into such things. Of course, guest appearances on people's Instagram lives and platforms just to increase your brand visibility. Let me quickly get into the chat room um, and see if there are any questions. Hi, my name is Vera. I've changed careers from an ES to a customer service executive. This new role as a marketing and customer service infused as one. My financial budget has just been approved, which should be for social media and other strategies that should promote the brand name. How can we help you? Um, definitely send me a message. I'm happy to help. But um, in addition to that as well, you want to also explore other avenues, right? You want to try out Instagram ads. But before you do all that, first of all, have what I call a marketing plan, right? Have a marketing plan. What message does the organization want to communicate at this particular point in time? What is the message they are trying to communicate? Are they trying to promote a particular store in a particular location? Are they trying to promote a service? What specifically is the goal? Once you are clear about the goal, then you now need to, to ask, the people I want to reach with this message, where are they? If I scratch it, first of all, who are they? Who are the people I want to reach? Are they people between the ages of 18 to 35? Are they people between the ages of zero to five? What is the age range of the people I'm trying to reach? And then two or three, where can I now find them? Those are some of the key things that should help you, you know, that can spearhead your marketing you know, solution. Send us a message, we'll definitely um, give you feedback on that. Okay, let's move on. Let me quickly see what's in the chat room. Five minutes to round up. Ha 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 ha. Okay, let's, let's move on quickly then. All right presentation we made available in case we don't get to go through all of them um, but these are some ways you can leverage your brand visibility and of course these are some tools that could also help you increase your brand visibility there's something called instant spacer where you're using it on on your phone on instagram right it helps you to space out the words that you use space out the word that you use so that it's not gum 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 together it's not gum together instant spacer is a fantastic one Hootsuite is another one. This is Hootsuite. What Hootsuite does is that it helps you schedule your post. So you don't have to be on social media 24 hours a day, posting, posting, posting. You can actually just schedule your post and people would respond to you. Um, or rather, it will be going out automatically while you do other things. There is Google Digital Skills. It's a free training offered by Google. Go and use that training. Learn how to put your business on the Google map so that when people search for you. They can actually have an address. Um, or a location that gives you more credibility. I made a presentation on Canva. Canva is a fantastic tool that allow you to design social media posts and of course make presentations. There's also something called Text Story. It's an app if you run a, uh, a business. It's an interactive app that makes your marketing a lot more interesting. And then finally, all your marketing efforts may, may never become possible, right? If you do not have all of those things. Communication, you need to communicate effectively. You need to be motivated. You need to be inspiring. Um, to be inspired and inspiring, you need to have a clear cut vision. You need to have competence. Competence is so key when building a brand. Have ideas, be creative, be very passionate because the road ahead is not easy. We met a lot of disappointment, but you need to be so passionate. Your passion will keep you going. And of course, you need to be innovative. Innovative is not something that's not just doing something new. 
innovation is an old thing in a new way, pretty much. Um, I think that's much the end of my presentation today. So in the chat room right now, as we speak, before um, before TBLA takes over, tell me what you have learned. Put your questions in the chat room. Tell me what you have learned. Put your questions in the chat room. When we remind ourselves what we have learned, it sticks. We don't forget anymore. So what did you learn? There are 37 people in the room. What did you learn from today's session? Even as I hand over to um, as I hand over to TBL. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, it has been an interesting session thus far. You kept us glued to uh, our devices listening to you. Thank you. In fact, we will want to keep listening to you over and over again. We hope that um, most of our listeners will be um, willing to fo follow you after now. So I encourage everyone who is on this platform to follow follow our social media, get to know her better, follow Donuts for Africa. And most importantly, don't forget to follow uh, TBLF, follow the Bridge Leadership Foundation, all our social media, um, our LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Follow us and leave your comments there. You can tell us about uh, how impactful this online series uh, meant to you. So, but um, before we go, as I said, we've learned a lot today. For example, we've learned um, how to increase our brand visibility. That is um, mentioning just three. You identify a message, identify a platform, and then be consistent on what you do. So um, again, brand visibility is the extent to which you are remembered or to which you are recognized by your consumers. So an amazing session today. And we also like that you, you were able to switch in and attend to questions while the session was going on. So thank you very much. I believe um, because we've, we've really exhausted a lot of time today, we will be closing this session for today and I want to encourage as many persons that are on board today, don't forget to invite someone by this time next month, as, as soon as you start seeing our posts for the next online series, share as much as possible and follow, and follow our social media. So once again, thank you very much. Uh, thank, you very, thank you very much for having me.